Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to talk about two brand new NASes in the form of the Ugreen DXP2800 and DXP4800 two NASes that have been unveiled over at the IFA 2023 event over in Berlin now before we go any further it's worth highlighting that we are going to reference a few different sites here we didn't get to go ourselves we got wrapped up in other things like that 100k business but thanks to the website computer base where the majority of the information for this video is sourced from so again they are linked in the description and hopefully we'll be talking about this device a lot more next year but do head to that page where the majority of this information has come from it's not even made it onto Ugreen's own website yet or even in their press releases but we want to talk about these two devices because genuinely although we've talked about a lot of DIY solutions and kind of out there solutions that have challenged the likes of uh, Synology and QNAP and other turnkey solutions providers this is one of the most confident alternatives i've seen in a very very long time and although we don't have all the information and there's still question marks bubbling in the air about this what we do know is very very impressive indeed but on to the business of this now so as you can see there is the four bay that's the dxp um, 4800 and there is indeed a two bay as well very very similar in the hardware architecture there's a few advantages uh, in form of the four bay beyond the obvious ones that we want to talk about but ugreen is uh they were generally associated with adapters and peripherals they were one of those outside of the edge brands that you you know originally started as more of an aliexpress name that has gradually got more confident and known over time and we actually knew about this particular NAS in advance there was a press release floating around on numerous websites talking about what they were hoping to show off at IFA 2023 indeed when we talked about that link station NAS about a week ago that was another NAS that was being unveiled apparently at IFA uh, 2023 I've not heard a great deal about that so I think that went ahead but do let me know in the comments if you heard more about it but Alongside these press releases, the website that really, really got behind this and told us more about this was Computer Base. So a lot more information about this system. They are going to give more information on this next year when this rolls out. But to get the hardware specifications out of the way, uh, this is uh, running on a quad-core Intel CPU. This is one of the first analysis that we have seen thus far rolling out. Let's find it there with uh, the n100 cpu now for those that aren't aware at the end of 2022 going into 2023 intel sort of retired the pentium and the celeron range they uh, made it very clear in press releases that they were in the next refresh retiring those product families and working on this new series of prosumer uh, and uh, kind of energy efficient CPUs that were going to live either between the Celeron and Pentium families or basically absorbing all of those markets into a new family of processors and one of the earliest ones they talked about was this one the N100 and frankly it is a great little CPU there and if you know the big turnkey NAS brands like your Synologies and your QNAPs embrace this CPU in their next refresh I'll be a happy bunny why is that this CPU here is you know comparable to many Pentiums there but certainly scales up against that of a number of the Celerons in the market right now that N5105 the J6412 uh, or that Pentium the N um, 600 uh, N6000 series there the N6005 this CPU is quad core for thread CPU with just a rating of 6 watt TDP now with that you get a 3.4 gigahertz processor which is fantastic you also get integrated graphics to a lovely uh, degree I will add as well this isn't one of those lower 250 350 megahertz with burst rate this is up to a lovely impressive 750 there with UHD 750. Uh, on top of that, this also arrives with 16 gig of memory support, which I would have liked to have seen higher. But I will say it certainly supports better memory than other CPUs right now on the market. We will get back to the NAS itself, but I just really wanted to focus in on this CPU because it's got so much to play with in terms of it being a Gen 3 um, uh, CPU there. It's got an extra lane uh, to play with. It doesn't sound like much, but once you want to add on certain feature sets into these devices, the extra lane could make all the difference in a number of very key ways. Now, bringing things back to the NAS in question, what we know about this thanks to computer base and the article is first and foremost it's arriving with that cpu and 8 gig of memory the 8 gig of memory most certainly confirmed for the 4 bay we don't know if the 2 bay is going to have 8 gig of memory i'm not sure if they'll scale it appropriately 
But alongside that, the system also has Gen 3 M2 NVMe uh, SSD bays inside. That's for both the two bay and that four base. Two slots inside there, presumably Gen 3 times one or Gen 3 times two. We don't know for certain on that. But again, this is something we're seeing as mainstream in a lot of NAS devices right now. Another thing this has, you may have spotted it already, uh, that kind of changes the game a little bit there, is this device. You can see it there at the bottom. If we go for a zoom in, we can see that this device has got itself a lovely little SD card slot. It's got USB Type C. Hopefully, my face isn't obscuring that. It's got USB Type C there. It also has USB 3.2 Gen 2 support with 10 gigabits per second, uh, 10 gigabit USB. But that SD card slot only on the four bay is going to be very advantageous uh, to photo video editors and you know solo photographers that are looking for NAS storage there to just upload those projects on the go. It does support the very latest 22 TB hard drives from WD and C as well they have confirmed and although the two bay lacks that ssd slot that we just mentioned uh, the sd card slot that we mentioned it does still have the usb 3.2 support there and that usb type c connector as well now in terms of network connectivity the device is riding with dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet slots there there was a slight area of contention on the um uh, computer base article where they were talking about possibly uh, um something in the badge there denoting the five gigabits per second network speed there but i do think that is aggregated together there's also a mesh panel um covering the back there with that rear quiet fan too um so overall what we're seeing here is something that's borrowing quite a lot from other brands out there. It's got the USB 3.2 Gen 2 connection, as well as standard USB 3 and USB 2 used in conjunction with an HDMI port, HDMI 2.1 as well. So again, lovely great frame rate there for your 4K and your 1080p if need be. And overall, we're looking at a very, very capable system indeed. And that 4 bay in particular have an SD card slot, something that we thought we'd seen the back of really in the past with a lot of devices, something a lot of users still demand to this day. Day. Now, when it comes to availability, the nearest we have to that is what um, Ugreen themselves told Computerbase, and that is they're looking at early 2024 launch. Now, that is going to put it against the newer generation, probably, of your QNAPs. Possibly Synology, but I'm not sure Synology have fallen out of the refresh cycle a little bit with some of their devices. You generally find that refreshes a lot of units happen every two to 2.5 years. And the Synology, uh, sorry, the QNAP 6.4 series arrived in 2022. Some elements in that series uh, of devices from them may see refreshes. So this may be going up against some of the mainline NAS competitors when they refresh their prosumer devices, likely with this similar CPU as it becomes a lot more popular over time. Now, another thing that's not confirmed anywhere on this, not alongside the price I might add, is the software. There's no mention anywhere of whether this is gonna run with an in-house OS, whether it's gonna run OS free, or it's going to run with, say, an unlicensed or an unconfirmed license for, let's say, Unraid that you have to upgrade yourself or an inclusive Unraid license. We have started to see a lot of devices roll out with pre-activated Unraid licensing. To what extent, we're not sure. But that might be the case here. When we look at their product ranges here, they've got plenty of storage adapters and they've got plenty of larger scale raid boxes as well but they've still yet to kind of flesh out any kind of nas series on their range of devices and therefore we still have no clue where they're going to go in terms of software that cpu is a little underwhelming there for a true nas build but it is right on the money for a, um a, an unraid build and i will also add now unraid supports those zfs pool storage that could be a way to give yourself zfs level storage with Unraid's lower resource footprint on a great little device here with KVM thanks to that HDMI output. But that's everything we know right now on the U Green series of DXP 2800 and DXP 4800 there. Let me know what you guys think of this device in the comments. Again, do visit the link below over to Computer Base to learn out more about it. No doubt they are going to update this article regularly and the people are already engaging with it there and I'm sure there's lots of new information to enjoy. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you did. Like, subscribe, the usual stuff. Have a great week.